Thank you for joining me as we look at The Colorful Past by Edward Bulmer, forward by the Duchess of Richmond. Edward Bulmer's background is in architectural history, picture conservation, and interior design. He is unique among interior designers as he is also an architectural historian, self-described colorman, eco-warrior, and farmer. He is the owner and founder of Edward Bulmer Natural Paints, which are rich in historical colors and plant-based. They are all safe for the environment. This began as an effort on his part to clean up the paint industry. Edward has been in the house and garden top 100 since it began. He is without a doubt the go-to interior designer in the UK if you have a historic home or building project. He remains in demand for that rare combination of historical knowledge, creativity, and practicality that he brings to major restoration projects in the nation's most important buildings and family homes. In this book, Bulmer brings readers on an in-depth tour of his work in some of Britain's grandest homes, including Althorpe, Goodwood, Pitts Hill House, and Broughton Hall, along with his work for private clients. He also highlights his own stunning home, a Queen Anne Manor House, built in 1700. He, along with his family, have spent the last 20 years turning this country farmhouse into a comfortable, practical home with a working organic farm that perfectly accommodate the demands of contemporary living. The Duchess of Richmond lives at Goodwood House, which has belonged to her family since 1697. Was introduced to Edward Bulmer in 1994 when he was hired to conserve the family's picture collection. She writes in the foreword, Edward's knowledge of traditional and natural materials was impressive. It is rewarding to see how through the course of his 30-year career, which is beautifully captured in this book, he has consistently used only natural materials. Not only did he help to restore the family's pictures and paintings, but he restored and renovated much of the interior, restoring many of the upholstered items with exact reproductions of the silk fabric originally used. Edward Bulmer writes in the introduction, Renovation and restoration will keep these historic homes standing. But as William Morris argued, this should not involve replacement or speculative recreation. It should value the creative endeavor of long dead designers and preserve the work of often unknown craftsmen. It is best to keep everything as long as possible until it is absolutely necessary to remove or alter it. It is this belief that gave Bulmer the opportunity 
to work as an independent interior designer for Charles, Earl of Spencer, at Althorpe. It was this successful project that gave other house owners the confidence to solicit his expertise. From well-appointed entrance halls to lavishly decorated studies and dining rooms that seat 100 guests, this book is full of centuries-old traditional design that is still relevant and stylish all these years later. This book will appeal to devotees of English country houses and of timeless English design. Through careful conservation and thoughtful restoration, these historic treasures can be enjoyed for many years to come. The Colorful Past, Edward Bulmer and the English Country House. Forward by the Duchess of Richmond. Photography by Paul Whitebread. This book is 288 pages. It is published by Rizzoli and it retails for $65. The art museums of Colonial Williamsburg include two world-class museums under one roof, the Abby Aldrich Rockefeller Folk Art Museum and the DeWitt Wallace Decorative Arts Museum. Abby Aldrich Rockefeller Folk Art Museum houses a world-class folk art collection that includes oil paintings, watercolors, pastel drawings, and much more. The DeWitt Wallace Decorative Arts Museum presents treasures of American and British decorative arts, including one of the largest collections of British ceramics outside of England. This dollhouse was purchased by the Folk Art Museum in 1969 from the famous toy seller F.A.O. Swartz. Mr. Swartz had acquired the dollhouse from a contractor who discovered it in the attic of a Long Island mansion that was scheduled for demolition. It has been dated to about 1900. It is believed to be built from drawings of an actual house and constructed by a master craftsman at the request of indulgent parents. I hope you will enjoy this walk with me as we look at a very few of the items the museum has to offer. 